Hey, at least I'm breathing. I know it took a while. Been looking for a sweet song, a sign of spring. Waiting for a reason to laugh, to sing. To figure out just how I've been spending way too many thoughts on what went wrong. Yes, what goes on finally will come down. So you're probably wondering, what does that montage at the beginning of this video have to do with anything? The answer is nothing. Except for that we are going to be talking about a simple and easy to use tool that's also free that helps you convert video for a wide variety of purposes and I will be converting that particular video. It's also a video about a car that I've had for a very long time that I recently found a new home for. Goodbye, old friend. And so for those of you who are like, can you just get to the tutorial already? I've left chapter markers below this video as well, so you can just click ahead right to the tutorial if you don't really need to be convinced as to why you need this type of software. But it's not really a secret that video is pretty much the most powerful and prominent form of media today. So whether you've got a TikTok channel, whether you've got a YouTube channel, or whether you do videos on Instagram, it doesn't matter. Pretty much every single platform that's popular and exists today is moving more in the direction of video. Now, whether you're like me and you use something like Final Cut Pro, or maybe you use something like Adobe After Effects or Adobe Premiere, and you're doing that level of video editing and exporting your projects, or if you're just shooting on your smartphone, every now and then we come across this situation where we just need this video file in another format. One of the most common ones that I personally encounter is when you export a more raw or high file size video file that you want somebody to review on the web. Now what you can do is you can just upload this thing to the web, but it's going to be 500, 600 megabytes, or even over a gig, depending upon how long the video is itself. But if somebody's on a mobile device or they don't have very fast internet, that's gonna cause some serious hassles and headaches for that person. Plus you're probably just going to needlessly eat through their bandwidth. The other part of that problem is if you're shooting in or if you're exporting in a video file format, something like M4V, not all web browsers can view that style of, or that format of video right in the browser. So it would need to be converted anyways on their end for them to be able to watch it, or they would need to download some sort of special software just to view it. And again, it just makes life a little bit trickier for everyone. But if you're still wondering for a reason why something like this would be useful, another big reason and something I've used it for in the past is doing bulk video conversions. So if you need to change the aspect ratio or if you need to remove the audio or if you just need to any number of things change the frame rate from 60 to 23 point you know 24 frames per second essentially or vice versa. If there's just a big folder full of videos and you need to be able to change all of them in a bulk conversion, you can use this app as well. And again, it's totally free. Okay, so without any further delay, let's hop in and I'll show you how to use an app by the name of Handbrake. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do if you haven't already is head on over to a site called handbrake.fr. And I will, of course, leave a link in the description so you can access this. And you just wanna click to download. Now, one of the great things about Handbrake Again, it's free, but also it's available on three different platforms. So of course you got Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. So you don't really have to worry about uh, what 
type of computer you're using, you can rest assured that it's going to be available for you. Just click that download button and then install on whatever platform you're gonna be using. Then what you're gonna see once you open Handbrake for the very first time is it's going to ask you to select a video. Now for this example, we're just gonna be using a single video, the one that I mentioned from the beginning of this video. And we're just gonna select a single file. We're gonna click open. I'll talk about how you can do a bulk conversion here in a minute because that took me a little bit of experimenting before I finally figured out how to do that. But what you'll notice here is that it's gonna show a video preview right here for you so you can actually see the size and the kind of a thumbnail at the of the beginning of your video. But there's gonna be a lot of settings here. So you can go through and change the dimensions, filters, a lot of different options here. But one of the great things about handbrake is that you can actually go in here and they've got a ton of presets that you can just use either as is or as a starting point for what you're going to be doing with your conversion so let's say for example i wanted to share this video with a friend right and i wanted to be i wanted them to be able to view it on the web well right now it's an m4v file and it's fairly large for how short that video is so 167 megabytes and again this may not be viewable depending upon what browser they're using. So what I can do is I can go under web and under Vimeo HQ or YouTube, Vimeo YouTube HQ, and I can pick the particular size I want. This video is in 4K, so it's gonna do 2160p at 60 FPS, which is 4K. That 60 FPS, however, isn't quite going to work for my purposes. Now, like I said, for most people, these presets are gonna work for 90% of the videos that you're gonna do. If you're trying to make them smaller or more viewable on the web, these presets are gonna work for you. They're gonna web optimize them as this checkbox indicates, and you could be done right there. However, I know that I shot mine at a different frame rate. So by default, it's a frame rate of 60. I want mine to be NTSC film or 23.976. So I'm gonna select that before I do my conversion. You can also change the video encoder if you want to. Again, a lot of these are gonna be more advanced uh, tools. So you really wanna make sure you know what you're doing. I'm not gonna cover all of these because if you know what these are, you don't need me to cover them. Like I said, for most people, you're probably just gonna select one of these particular drop-down options, one of these presets, and then you're gonna go from there. So like I said, the only thing I needed to modify, I've got the correct size, it's at 4K. I just needed it to be at a different frame rate, which I've changed. Lastly, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we have the right file selected. MP4 is pretty universally accepted by most web browsers. And since that's the goal here, what I'm trying to do is make this so that I can send this to a friend so they can open it and view it in their browser. I wanna do that, so it's web optimized. Plus an MP4 is gonna be a little bit more compressed. This, this particular format that this came in is going to be a little bit heftier because it's got more raw data in it. But let's go ahead and jump on up here then since I've got all the settings correct and we'll just click start. Now, one of the things to keep in mind as this conversion is taking place is that the amount of time it will take to compress or to convert each video will vary based upon how long the video is and what version it's converting it from and converting it to. So the amount of compression or the amount of change that is required by the algorithm to actually make the change of the video file, again, those two things are going to make a big difference with whether this is going to be a quick conversion or a quick process or take a long period of time. Okay, so it looks like it did complete that conversion. We'll see that here is the video file all ready to go. Still looks like it maintains some pretty good quality there, but one of the things we will notice, if we jump into my videos, click on the raw or the previous version, the M4V, see that's 167 megabytes, and now we have reduced it down to 117.4 megabytes. This will make a lot bigger difference if you're working with a large or longer video. Since this is a really short video, there's not a huge difference, but still it saved us around 50 megabytes or so. So it made it a lot more compressed. There's a number of other things you can do as well. If your goal is to get this video size or this file size down pretty significantly, you can actually change the quality in here to something lower. You can actually change the bit rate if you want to. So there's a lot of options that you have available to you. You can actually drop this down and this will actually decrease the file size significantly. Of course, the encoding itself, the quality of the video will deteriorate 
the more that you drop down the quality, but if you're trying to get this video to a very small size, that is something that is possible within Handbrake. So being able to convert a single video is super helpful, but I think what a lot of people are going to wanna to do with this is be able to change a lot of videos or kind of do a bulk conversion. So let's say you wanna go in here, I want this to be for, uh, for the web essentially. So YouTube Vimeo is the name of the preset, but say you want it to be, you know, 1080p. So a little bit smaller, maybe you shot it in 4K, you want it to be smaller and you've got a whole bunch of individual video files. Well, for the, for the longest time, I had a tough time with this because I thought I was just going to be able to go into the queue and then drag in my files, but that's not quite how it works. So let me go ahead and restart Handbrake real quick, just so you can see. So once we have Handbrake restarted, we'll just go ahead and click cancel. Then what we want to do is we want to go to open source and in, under open source, we're going to want to select the folder. Don't want to select any individual item. You want to select the folder that contains all of your videos that you want to bulk select. So we'll click open, wait for that to uh, or load and then we'll go to add titles to queue and we'll go to add all titles to queue so we'll press that and then you'll be able to see here that all of them have now been queued to add again like i mentioned i was just trying to drag and drop files over to this queue and it never worked so you just want to make sure that you do that folder selection and then you click start and then what you'll be able to see as that is going through the process of exporting uh, all those individually in the queue going through so this one's pending and this one is currently being converted one of the other things that you'll want to note as well as where this is exporting i of course am just having these export to my desktop but if you want to you can actually change and select and have these go to any other folder you just want to click browse before you actually click convert uh, and that will allow you to pick any other folder on your computer where you want that to be exported to okay so it looks like it's just wrapping up here it's at 80 and then a hundred percent there we go so it went ahead and it finished exporting both those files for me so there we go one of them is a vertical video that i made for tiktok and one is a horizontal video that i used of course for this video that you're currently watching but that's pretty much it so you can go in here and you can pick to add a single item that you want to convert or you can drag over a folder to make sure that you do a bulk conversion. Okay, so that's pretty much it. This is just one of those tools that I find myself using all the time. So I wanted to share it with you if for whatever reason, it will make your life easier as you are working with video. As always, if you found this video useful, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.